On this episode of the Ask Mike Ronald Show, we talk about trochlea dysplasia and some strategies we can do for people with chronic effusion. The Ask Mike Ronald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back everybody to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up in Boston at Champion PT and Performance. Mike Scaduto, Dan Pope, Lenny McCrina, Dave Tilly, all here answering your amazing questions. You, the listener or the watcher, <laughs> depending on which format you do. Because we're everywhere now. <laughs> we're everywhere. Sensor. Anybody listening to us on Spotify yet? Uh, no idea. I think Spotify's gonna come. Like that's gonna be Apple still doesn't have a good podcast app. So it, people just associate podcasts with Apple. And, yeah, no so, doubt. Yeah. It's gonna it's I don't know. I I listen to it on Spotify. I've been <laughs> using it more, but, go like Spotify. but anyway, Len, who's our uh, who's our student today? Do we have a student with us? We may have a student with us, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a student, his name is Trey Martin. He's known as Dr. Trey here at Champion. Uh, apparently Trey is very cold today. It's very warm outside. Yet Trey is wearing uh, a pull a pullover. With a, noted, this pullover does have a shirt underneath it. So I'm curious, you viewers, if you wear a pullover without a shirt underneath it, because he, historically he has. Oh, wait, that's the thing. It, like, it, it blew our mind. He did that here. Curious. Maybe he has a nice like fleece inside. It keeps it warm. Right. right. We don't know. I'm sure, it's fleece on the inside. But yeah. it was he has a good buffer. chest hair. It's, it's a good play. So yeah. I mean, it kind of it kind of goes. Trace had a, a couple of issues with his uh, apparel here. I think so far. Uh, we'll see. He had intelligence great. But. He had uh, he had casual Tuesday last week. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, whoa. <laughs> it's Thursday. I was off today. Yeah, yeah, it was it was close, but uh, but yeah, no. Dr. Trey is doing an amazing amazing job. He's uh, by far the best student we've had from East Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So we're you know we're super fortunate. Our number one student. Yeah. Right now. Uh, yeah, it's the best one we have on this episode. Dr. Trey, take it away. Kayla from Edmonton, Canada. Hey guys, love your show. I have a client who was diagnosed with trochlear dysplasia 15 years ago. He's super active but gets frustrated because their knee will get very swollen after a lot of activity and doctors have told him he's screwed and will forever have chondromalacia patella. Is this ongoing activity related edema normal due to his anatomy or should this be managed via activity of load management and building up strength? Thanks. Great question. What was her name again from Edmonton? Kayla. Kayla. I, I, why can't I ever remember names? Kayla from Edmonton. Great, great question. So trochlea dysplasia. So essentially, uh, we have a shallow trochlea. I guess we just assume that. I mean, there could be more to it, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm patiently listening. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a weird day. <laughs> it's like, it's early. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, so trochlea dysplasia, I mean, I, I think we're bucketing that as a shallow trochlea that's probably like has some instability, maybe it's kind of coming in and out. I wonder if there's more to it though, right? So. Uh, so I guess we'll let's start with this. What do you think the chronic effusion means? Who wants to start with that one? Why why would somebody with trochlear dysplasia have chronic effusion? What do you think? Uh, well, I see a lot of this in the gymnast world, and it's usually because of the relative like instability is kind of bumping things around a little bit. Might be getting a little bone bruising, stretching out some of the soft tissue more than joint caps are more than normal person with a deeper trochlear would so that's my opinion but i don't know if that's proven yeah it system. could have a defect yeah a little extra friction going on in that area whoa friction yeah in different areas than normally so the control of motion is as good just because you don't have the, the bony contours that fit right um, regularly and then you end up getting some swelling as a result from the irritation around yeah and you could you could be you could be articulating areas that are not like you know the most common so they the cartilage is a little different there it's a little thinner it's a little bit less uh, 
uh, uh, uh, able to handle the stress maybe. So maybe that cartilage is getting a little irritated. Or focal stress, maybe it's all like pinpointed. Yeah, no, you can have too much focal, right? Cause it's, it's on one aspect. Uh, heck, there could be a defect. And that's the thing that I, I, I was kind of, you know, wor worrying about here too. When I see a lot of chronic effusion, I think you guys are both right that it could be like that mild, but sometimes I think we miss that there could be like a little bit of a defect in there. So mm -hmm. on the undersurface of the patella probably, but even a little bit in the trochlea, um, you could have that. So, um, so th that's why they're having that effusion, right? So I, to answer the question, does anybody think that's normal? Yeah, like it's, it's, it's normal for them, but I don't think it's one of those things we, you know, we just deal with. So, you know, I, I think the first thing we would tackle is we try to figure out why they're getting this effusion, yeah. right? So are they doing an activity that is causing more irritation or that defect to articulate or, or something? Is there something we can do to control an activity that may be keeping it chronically effused? Because that's kind of step number one. I think like repetitive stuff is usually the biggest thing of running or I know like Dan and I have worked with a couple of higher level Olympic lifters and crossfitters who like just the same movements a lot and just seems to keep whacking the same same piece and that usually is where their focal issue comes from. Yeah. And, and, Variability. And, and, so I, to me, step one, right, is just are they doing repetitive things? Are they riding with, you know, a bike? Are they going for a <laughs> jog? Those types of things, right? So, all right, let's say we figure it out and we actually do decrease a little bit of the fusion, maybe not even 100%. What would be your next steps here? I mean, she, was it Kayla again? Kayla? Mm -hmm. Kayla kind of said, what do we do next? Do we just suck it up and load or what do you think? I think there's a lot of different ways you can modify Kayla or the person that Kayla's treating their training. We can uh, change the range of motion of an exercise. We can work in a limited range at first and maybe we're not putting as much stress um, through the patellofemoral joint and causing that effusion while still ba uh, building strength of the quad and like the glutes and everything. It seems to be a good long-term strategy to increase quad strength. I think yeah. that would be helpful for that person. Right. Um, but we don't want to flare it up too much and then gradually over time maybe increase the range of motion um, for things like squats, like split squats, single leg exercises. Yeah, so that would be my first thing. Yeah, it sounds like, so we, I, I do think we do want to strengthen, right? And you could argue that even sometimes they may be having that chronic confusion because they're weak and their quad's not strong enough and it can't stabilize the patella as well. So, I mean, that, that could be part of it and it's kind of like a downward spiral. So get it strong. So I kind of like what Mike said, and I, maybe that's like 1B, right? So 1A is let's try to modify activities to see if we can get rid of the chronic fusion. I wonder that if 1B then would be to let's try to work some strengthening, but within controlled ranges or controlled uh, exercises, like within their tolerance, within their envelope of function, like try to actually get them as strong as we can in, in that 1B phase, I guess. Yeah, something that was really helpful for me when I was a new grad was actually listening to you guys talk about the mapping of contact pressures and stuff. Like I really didn't have that as a concept. I was like not uh, familiar with what was articulating at what degrees. So if there, you can't figure out what exercises are provocative or not, look at some of those, I don't know who the papers are that map the cartilage, but you can figure out where it is and you can maybe avoid those ranges, it's really helpful. Yeah, I think that's great. And that's, I, and I, I'd group that into 1B is like, yeah. you know, understanding where, you know, the patella articulates and the, 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 the ground reaction forces that uh, go through the patella femoral joint. So you can then do as much exercise as you can in a controlled fashion. That would be 1B. And then once, or then two, I guess, we'll get to, you know, step two would be once that thing's settled down is then actually try to get it as strong as you can. Would we do anything else here? So we have a chronically uh, swollen and chronic issue with static stability. Is there anything we would do? Do you guys, anybody use external devices for stability? Yeah, I was going to say, we should probably consider a brace for your, your patient. Um, if he or she doesn't have the static stability, so his bone architecture is different than normal, um, the trochlea is moving more, so let's do, or the, the patella is moving more in the trochlea, let's give him something external, so let's give him some kind of brace that's going to maybe, you know, act as uh, some kind of, you know, something that's going to hold the patella in place during certain movements and see if that helps, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to wear that all the time, but if they're working out or if they're going to get back to their activity, I've seen pretty good success, and I think it just gives a mental confidence. Sounds like this person has been told his knee is, or her knee is going to explode soon, and this could be a mental component as well to help kind of shore that up of 15 years of, of having in the back of their head that their knee is damaged badly. 
you know, pain science stuff right there for you people. That's uh, that was that was big time. And yeah, you know what that does is by using something like a like a brace that gives some patellar stability is that allows you then to get to your like your one B phase exercises again and like being able to 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 do as much as we can with with some with some stability. And um, you know, the other one would probably be some tape. Right, and you know it's kind of interesting. I wrote a blog post on this a few years back now, but you know we used to, you know, I, I don't even, I wouldn't even say we because it was before us, but like 80s and 90s, like Jenny McConnell and like McConnell taping to try to actually move the patella. You know, I think that theory was, you know, you glide it in the direction you want, but I, I think the current evidence is actually showing us that if you apply some tape, it doesn't necessarily move it in the direction you think it's moving it, but it does help compress it. And when you help compress it, you help engage it within that troglia. Right? Right? So sometimes compression is bad, right? And too much compression would be would be bad. But if you're a shallow trochlea and you're kind of sitting a little bit off to the side and you're articulating in a small spot, like Dave kind of said, adding that compression to it increases the, the surface area of the articulation. So that way now the forces are distributed more against the patella. So even just a knee sleeve or some tape or, or, or you know, a brace that even has maybe some of that donut stability around there. It could all be, you know, super helpful for them to get strong again. And then maybe over time they can wean out of it because they gain some strength and dynamic stability of the quad to help stabilize, right? So, good. Anybody else? Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, you probably just wanna look at their movement. And the other big thing is like, what do they wanna get back to, you know? If they wanna get back to things like running, like there's a lot of stuff we can do from a running perspective, from programming, like cadence, you know, looking at the running technique. Uh, same thing goes with weightlifting, look at the way they move, see if there's any sort of valgus going on. Just trying to clean up any movement mechanics that are leading to problems over the course of time. Uh, maybe backing off of some of the volume and just saying like, look, your knee is not necessarily as strong as someone else would be. You know, it's a terrible thing to tell your patients, but we probably have to back off the volume. Maybe for you, you're squatting once a week, you're not gonna be squatting four times a week or something along those lines. Um, so what if they demand, I need to squat four times a week? Get used to some swelling. <laughs> <laughs> They're screwed, that's what Caleb said, right? Uh, awesome. What, what else, Dave? I would just agree with that. I'd say always quickly screen the ankle and the hip to see if maybe there's relative motion being made up from a really stiff ankle or like someone got real uh, stiff hip flexion. So when they squat, the knees cave, and that might kind of, kind of Chris Powers work is kind of look at like relative femoral motion or tibial motion. So that's probably lower on the list, but could be an issue. Yeah, control all that and then watch their biomechanics with the activities they want to do. I think that's that's a good strategy throughout the phases on, on how to deal with that. So I guess to answer your question, Kayla, no, I, I don't think they're screwed. I think there's some strategies we need to do. Um, I, I, this is the type of situation, I think the worst thing they, they can do is just sit on the couch and just say, whoa, it was me. Uh, or worse, just say like, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm just gonna live with it and just keep it swollen all the time. That's usually your body's way of telling you something's up, right? So I don't think we just want to deal with the swelling. We want to see if we can actually alleviate it. So awesome. Great question. Thanks so much, Kayla. If you have another question like that, please head to MikeRinald.com and click on that podcast link and you can fill out the form. Ask us anything you guys want. We'll keep answering on these, these uh, future episodes. See you on the next one.